All right, this is your brother Aisha Yar coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstones I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth with the truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aqua that's listening and learning. Today's video is going to be entitled, I Can't Wait to See the Movie of Esau's Wickedness. All right. I can't wait to see the movie of Esau's wickedness. <laughs> now, I got inspired to do this lesson because I was recently watching MasterChef. Because, man, I, I love food. You know, outside of doing music, my second talent or passion in life, if I had more time to actually do these things, I would learn how to uh, cook. You know, uh, I cook food every day. And, uh, you know, I just, I just love it, man. Food is where it's at. <laughs> Food gets you swole. Food helps you lose weight. <laughs> food, you know, uh, uh, um, balances the body out. And as long as you have moderation, you know, food is food is great, man. All right. So, um, I was watching this show, and you know, whenever you watch TV shows and movies or whatever, you look at things with your spiritual eyes. Now, you can't deny it. Everything that you see, you see things from a spiritual sense, as far as looking at things for righteousness' sake. Or looking at things for wickedness sake okay and so i was watching uh master chef because i'm pretty much binge watching like all of the seasons and um i came across this episode and within this episode you know i'm looking at it and i'm just like ah uh, i wish this shit was real <laughs> you know i'm getting tired of looking at sports or whatever and you can't really enjoy it fully because you know that this shit is is scripted you know that this shit is um they have to follow certain orders they can't just go out there and actually showcase their talents talents like that because as we all know anybody that's a part of the industry they worship satan it's well it's very well known all right and one of the things that these celebrities do is they have witchcraft and one of the things that they practice is witchcraft and one of the things that helps them out to in, improve their talents is they pray to satan it was all kind of videos out back in the day like 10 years ago when people was exposed in the illuminati all kind of celebrities were being exposed like uh drake was in the studio and he was rapping and you could see him throwing up the 666 symbol so he can uh sound better and rap better and it's the same thing that goes with you know people like michael jordan kobe bryant stone cold steve austin tom brady so forth and so on and the thing is i never really thought about it as people worshiping satan so then they can have better cooking skills all right <laughs> i never thought about that and so like i said i'm over here and then the thing is <laughs> i ain't gonna front you know i'm over here uh drinking beer while i'm looking at this and so now i'm getting even an um, even more sp <laughs> i'm getting even a more spiritual sense while looking at this and i'm just like damn man I i'm enjoying the show but i'm hating it at the same time all right because i'm just like i you can tell you can just tell this whole show is fake and i remember the brother um uh uh damn what's the brother name amawanga bar is that is that his name i'll select your brother if i get your name wrong hold on let me look it up because i hate it when i forget um brother's names because you know i like to um give them them credit the credit is due man this is definitely one of those times because he did a lesson a while ago and um hold on the uh i think that's his name amawanga bar i may be wrong but the brother from gms virginia north 777 you if you come across this you <laughs> all right uh i was watching a video he did a few months back and he was doing a video on how TV shows are programs, and they were pretty much uh, created to program the minds of the people. And that was a very edifying lesson, all right? And um, after I finished looking at that video, I'm like, damn, Esau really out here doing the most to make sure that he controls these people at an all-time high, and completely, all right? And so, like I said, getting back to this, I was watching this show, and I'm just like, I got to see through all of the bullshit. And I'm like, the people on this show are actors, all right these are not people who literally just got a magical chance to uh win two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for their talents or whatever because you got to think about it at the end of the day 
Esau has to put on this program, all right? So things have to go a certain way. And like I said, I never really thought about celebrities using the, po the, the power on the left-hand side so they can cook better. I'm like, it's, it's, it's cooking, it's food. But at the same time, this is Esau we talking about, right? So like I said, I'm looking at this, looking at the show, and at the end of the day, I'm just like, huh, I'm not, you know, I'm enjoying the show, but I'm getting to the point where I'm about to turn this shit off. Because I'm, like I said, I'm getting tired of living in this fake-ass world, man. Everything is staged. You know, all kind of brothers exposed the Super Bowl when the Rams won. How that shit is staged. Um, Elder Manak Zakba from South Carolina did a video. on the, he been doing videos on the Super Bowl pretty much every year, showing the commercials and everything. It's just like, man, this... I'm getting tired of living in a life where people are not real. I, it, you know, I, I was speaking about this to somebody. I'm like, it would, the show would be way better if you actually had people who are on the show and they actually showcase their talents. Because the thing is, there's people out here who look at these shows, who look at people in the NBA or the NFL, and these people are actually on the grind getting these skills up, just like the way that they show it on TV. And these people aren't worshiping Satan or doing witchcraft at, at all, for the most part, all right? And so, like I said, I was looking at it, and I got pissed. <laughs> then I'm looking at these certain parts right here, and I'm going to play it real quick. He's going to speak about the blood and the stakes, because this is one of the things that pisses me off, because a lot of people say, oh, no, you know, when they cook steak, you got to eat it rare or medium rare, right? As we all know, the scriptures say not to eat blood, right? So I'm going to go ahead and play this real quick so you can see. This is uh, <laughs> one of this, um, uh, uh, one of the hosts. The judge's name is Joe. He's going to say this is his favorite cut, as we all know, because he's Esau. But it's all good. So let's play this real quick. Generously provided by Walmart, which sells the highest quality choice steak. So tonight, your challenge is to cook three cuts of steak three different ways. The first way we'll ask you to prepare a steak is the way I enjoy to eat my steaks, and that's rare. Now, rare does not mean raw. It means slightly above body temperature with a deep ruby red center, and then ra <laughs> Wait. radiating all the way outwards to a char. Got it? Wrong. Wrong. That shit is raw. That shit is raw. Now, rare. Right? And you know, and we like it I said, we all know about slightly um, hold above on. body temperature with a deep ruby red. Raw. That shit is raw. All right. I don't care what they say. As we all know, we already know this. How Esau gets down. Esau uh, eats blood, man. He drinks blood. And that's why you know, read, read the book of Genesis when you read about Esau. He speaks about that. All right. He gave up his birthright for one morsel of meat that was not cooked. He wanted that red pottage. All right. So. This is what he likes to eat. And like I said, I'm over here watching the show and I get pissed when I see this because this world pushes, if you don't eat your steaks like this or medium rare, you destroyed it. <laughs> but then this is what Gordon Ramsay's saying. Like now Gordon Ramsay, I don't know. I, I feel, I don't know if he could be Jake or not, but sometimes you're like, man, I'm on the fence with that dude, but that doesn't, that's here or there. Really doesn't mean anything. But this is what Gordon Ramsay said about the steak. Hold on. In the center. That is. Now I still have a chance. It all comes down to the well done steak. Yeah, the okay. well done steak, the one that is the hardest to cook. Okay, there's an art in cooking a well done steak. Great sear. Well done, but moist in the center. That is difficult to pull off. see all this I think it was right regard the importance oh. of cooking it to perfection no blood in the center <laughs> no pinkness jumping out mm -hmm. now you see you heard what he just said he said when you cook a well done steak there's no blood in the center no pinkness but the judge before him was like, no, this is a steak that's cooked, but it's, it's got to have the, the perfect 
radiance or whatever he said. You know, it's charred on the outside, but it's not raw. It's cooked. It's just look like that pretty much. But for what Gordon Ramsay just say, what he just say? He said, no blood, no pinkness. And as we all know, when we read the scriptures, it tells you if you eat anything with blood, it's what? It's raw. It's raw. All right. So, of course, I'm over here looking at this and I'm, I'm, I get pissed because I always tell people, even, you know, um, when I be at work or whoever it is, I'll be, they ask me, they be like, man, how you get your steaks cooked? I'm like, well done. I'm like, I don't want no damn blood. And people always say, it's not blood. It's not blood. And I'm like, yeah, it is. It's not cooked. <laughs> it's not cooked. But I'm just like, all right, whatever. You know, I just, I just leave it alone. You know, I don't get into no deep conversation or whatever. I just tell people, no, cook my damn meat, man. But I, as I was getting back to, I'm watching this and then I see shit like that. That makes me mad. And then, you know, like I said, I'm over here looking at the show. I'm just like, man, fam, this shit is the, it's the fakest shit ever. And then I'm getting to the point where now my mind is just working. And I'm just thinking about, like, all of the things they're doing behind the scenes. You know, the things that the, the small hats are telling Gordon Ramsay and the other judges. Like, hey, man, do this on the show. Say this. So forth and so on. Because at the end of the day, like the brother said from GMS Virginia North, he said, this is a program. Certain things have to be put in front of the people in order for the people to stay glued to the screen and in order for them to actually have their minds altered for what they're viewing in front of them, okay? So I'm just like, now I'm thinking like, man, what is, I, I, I got to the point where like, I can't wait to see the actual wickedness that Esau have done. And the reason why that came into my mind was because then I started, I remember another video I looked at from uh, uh, Remnant Save 144, um, that brother's name. Man, I'm forgetting everybody's names today. <laughs> uh, but that uh, that channel, and I was watching his video, and I remember him saying, we're going to be able to see it. We're going to be able to see it. And I remember Apostle Ramla, we said, well, we got inside the chariot, and we finally um, land, or whatever the case may be, we're going to be able to see uh, Yahweh Shai on the cross. He was like, we're going to have to ball, meaning cry, one last time because we're actually going to be able to see Yahweh Shai go through what he went through and we're going to tear up a lot. All right. And so I'm just like, man, we're going to be able to see Yahweh Shai go through what he went through, which was orchestrated by Esau, but definitely helped by two, you know, the two thirds of our people back then. And then I'm just like, I remember uh, the brother from Remnant Save 144 is like, look, man, we're going to have all life to actually view this. You know, he was because, you know, when you think about this, it's like, man, there's a lot of history that, you know, we just read about, but we've never seen it. He was like, look, man, we're going to have all the time in the world to look at all of these things. And at then that's what got me to do this lesson because <laughs> I was like, I can't wait to see the movie of Esau's wickedness. Because when we actually see this, this is definitely going to help us meditate terror on Esau. And this is definitely going to help us get that anger that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to put on us to make sure that this slavery goes well. And when I say well, I mean they're going to work their asses off. And at the end of the day too, they're going to receive double, meaning the violence that's going to happen to them too. All right? There's no denying that, man. It's written. It's like we read the book of Ezekiel, chapter 35, verse 5. It says, hey, since you didn't have, since you wanted to pursue blood, and you wanted to have that hatred, you know what? I don't even want to butcher it. I don't even want to butcher it. Let's just go ahead and get it. This is Ezekiel, chapter 35, verse 5. It says, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end, Therefore, as I live, said the Lord power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. All right? So this is going to happen. Their blood is going to be shed. And how Shai said himself, like, look, his garments is going to be as if he was stomping grapes to make wine. The garments are going to be covered in blood. Our garments are going to be covered in blood, man. That's just what it's going to be. And guess what? We're going to enjoy it, too. Just the same way that they did. Just like when you look at them old slavery movies and they over here hanging Jake. And then after they hang Jake, they light him on fire while he's still on the tree. 
and then the, the slave owner get his wife and they'll start doing they'll start dancing and everything in the middle smiling and everything while our people are in the background looking at one of their brothers and sisters burn and they don't they have the complete opposite emotion so it's gonna go down man we're gonna laugh and we're gonna be happy when these things happen to them too in the kingdom okay but like i said i was like i can't wait to see it i want to see it man i want to see it because um just like uh elder Manata zakba said in one of his videos he was just like look when you actually get called up to court and they actually expose everything that you have done and they actually read back everything that you did and you have to actually hear or see everything that you did that's going to make the judgment even worse you're going to look at it like damn i fucked up and it's 11 144 call halayim yahweh about shem yahweh shai all right so we're going to start off with this let's get second thessalonians chapter 2 we're going to start at verse 1 it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, is at hand, it's near. All right? Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be, re be revealed, the son of perdition who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called the Mosai or that is worshipped so that he is as so so that he as the Mosai sitteth in the temple of the Mosai showing himself that he is the Mosai all right this is speaking about Esau okay because he is the man of sin and he is being revealed now you can read about this as well in Isaiah the 14th chapter because it tells you in, um, in Isaiah 14 he's trying to be like the Mosai this is why they have these things called predictive programming. Like I said, when you look at the TV shows and everything, they put certain things that's going to happen in the future that they're going to orchestrate, making themselves seem like they're the most high. All right. And then that's why when people see these things happen that were um, showcasing these TV shows and movies, people really don't get freaked out about it because they're programmed to this accepted. And a lot of people are. And that's why when the MOTB um, it's finally mandatory. A lot of people are just going to accept it. They're going to run toward it because, first of all, they're going to panic. They're not going to have any type of integrity. They're not going to have any type of, you know, balls of steel or <laughs> whatever you want to call it. They're not going to stand strong for what they believe in. They're going to hurry up and take the MOTB just for the simple fact that they want things to go back to normal and they don't, they're getting tired of suffering. So it is what it is, man. But verse 5, it says, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And it says, and now you know what withhold it, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of righteousness, of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved, all right? So right now, the wicked is being revealed. Esau, Edom, the so-called white man is being revealed within these last days. First and foremost, because of the prophets that's out here, starting with the apostles on down, all right? And um, they're being revealed because of the brothers going out on the highways and the byways, brothers uploading videos, left and right, any type of material that we get, we expose it, whether it's a small video and we put scriptures behind it or it's a, a whole live stream, all right, and a whole lot of scriptures come out, okay? They're being revealed with everything that they have done in this earth, and it's happening right now. It's happening right now. We're actually seeing the wickedness that Esau was doing. But like I said, the thing is, we just don't see the things that's going on behind the scenes, all right? We know these things are happening. We know that Esau has sex with animals. He um, commits uh, sodomy, all right? Uh, all of the sacrifices that happens behind the scenes as far as actually getting rid of people, you know, the things that happens when they actually pollute and uh, pollute the food, pollute the water on purpose, 
We know these things are, are out here because we have to eat the food. We have to breathe this air. We have to drink this water. We see the um the uh uh the effects of the people who are in the industry and the effects of the people that are in the world who actually follow these things because they can't help themselves. All right, when you see certain celebrities do uh, interviews or music videos and everything like that, one of the things is that let us know that these things happen is they have to throw up certain hand gestures, okay, to let Esau know that they are down for this. The, the, the content that they put out in front of the people, you can just feel the evil, you can feel the wicked vibration. There's certain things that they just can't hide. So we know something is being done behind the scenes where they're telling these people to do these wicked things. That's the part I can't wait to see. I want to see that. <laughs> because like I said, I'm over here watching something as simple as MasterChef, man. You can't you can't front your spiritual sense anymore, man. You look at something as, as, as simple as it's cooking food and now your mind starts to work. And that's the beauty of being in this truth. Call Halayim Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai for that, man. Because we can see right through the bullshit of this world. All right, but this is what's happening right now. Esau Edom is being revealed. All right, and he does have the power on the left-hand side working with Satan. With all power and signs and lying wonders, okay? He works on the left-hand side, but there's going to become a time where he's going to pray to Satan and the Most High is going to tell Satan, that's it. His time is up. No more blessing him anymore. They're going to try to pray and whatever, and they're going to see that their life is going to continue to crumble, 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 crumble. And the reason being is because of what? What well, we just read a few verses up. What well, we just read a few verses up. Verse 2, it says that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Yahweh Shai is at hand. This is why. Because now wickedness is about to be up and righteousness is about to take over, which is going to be led by our Lord, Yahweh Shai. So the Most High is going to give the order to his head angel on the left hand side, Satan, and tell him, hey, look, go ahead and bring all the judgment to two thirds of our people and the rest of these heathen nations that's out here. And don't bless Esau anymore. Then he's going to give orders to the top angel on the right hand side, which is Yahweh Shai. He's going to say, all right, go down there. <laughs> take out all the two-thirds as well take out all of these heathen nations and save my elect okay and 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 usher in the kingdom and that's exactly what's getting ready to happen now all right we're seeing it right before our eyes man so now that we're actually seeing esau be revealed with the simple things that we can see from the platforms of facebook twitter instagram youtube tiktok so forth and so on now you'd be like man when we get into the kingdom, we have those godlike bodies. We're going to be able, be able to see the things that's going on behind the scenes, too. Just for the simple fact that we got to judge Esau on the things that he have done. We're going to be able to see it, man. And like I said, I can't wait to see it because it's going to make me mad. It's going to piss me off. And it's going to motivate me to help Yahweh Shai and the 12 apostles <laughs> and 144,000. If I make it, it's going to motivate me. To make sure that the kingdom is ran correctly. And yes, I can't wait to bring judgment, help bring judgment upon Esau for this bullshit, man. Because like I said, I'm getting tired of living in a world where everything is fake. I can't enjoy a basketball game really anymore. I can't enjoy a football game like that really anymore because they're not really out there playing their hearts out. They're not. <laughs> now, of course, certain things that, you know, happens, you, they can showcase the talent because... A lot of them are talented, of course, but at the end of the day, a lot of this shit is staged. They have to put on a show. <laughs> this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 1. It says, For thy incorruptible spirit is in all things. Therefore chastenest thou them by little and little that offend, and warnest them by putting them in remembrance wherein they have offended, that leaving their wickedness they may believe on thee, O Lord. For it was thy will to destroy by the hands of our fathers, both those old inhabitants of thy holy land, whom thou hatest for doing most odious works of witchcraft and wicked sacrifices. All right. A lot of our people back in the day in the ancient world did practice these um, things. All right. They committed witchcraft and, and they did sacrifices just like our people do today. It's not a thing uh, that's new. That's why the scriptures say there's nothing new under the sun. But at the end of the day, Esau is definitely 
first and foremost of uh, the uh, forerunners of doing these wicked acts, man. He commits witchcraft. He definitely do the sacrifices because this is one of the ways that he has to, uh, this is one of the things that he have to do in order for him to stay in, in, in power. He got to do a lot of wickedness, man. That's why I was one dude that I was looking at and he um, did an interview and he was like, look, if I really spoke about all the atrocious and hideous things that the industry did, you all will not look at me the same. You all will probably throw up. You all will probably have the most shocking face. <laughs> Everything. He was like, you all just do not understand the things that goes on behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, man. And this is why this scripture is here um, in Psalms. Because the things behind the scenes, this is what they do. Psalm 64, chapter 5. I mean, verse 5. It, say, it says, they encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune and lay snares privately. They say, who shall see them? They search out iniquities. They, go, they search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search, both the inward thought of every one of them, and the heart is deep. Esau literally, like I said, they go behind the scenes, they have these meetings, they discuss things. Like I said, as far as the medical field, the food field, the entertainment field, the housing field, the job field, all of it, school, everything is, is discussed with them. They like, look, we're gonna charge for this, we're gonna make people do this, we're gonna tell them this is the way that you come up in life, go to school, go to college, and I'll do all of these things. Now it's being revealed that what? Going to college is bullshit. People are thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in debt, right? You go to you want to be successful, you gotta become a celebrity if you want to be rich. Now that's really exposed that you gotta sell out. If you want to eat healthy, now you gotta go to the organic section of the store when it shouldn't even be an organic section in the in the first place. Is this supposed to be food that's good for you? But they literally process this food and they sell it to people. Now people getting sick every single day. Then, you know, if you if for the people that's, you know, worn out because of going to work eight to 12 hours a day, then they got to deal with family. Then they got to deal with other things outside of that life. What people do, they, they get DoorDash, they get Uber, they get food that's already cooked in these restaurants. And these restaurants, the people who own it, you already know that a lot of this food is, is messed up as far as these restaurants are concerned. So now these people get the food delivered <laughs> to them. Or people go to the store, they get these microwavable meals. And they be like, okay, this is good enough. As long as you get something to eat. All of this is being done because they encourage themselves in an evil matter. The 13 banking families, the ones that rule this this earth, they go behind the scenes and they speak to each other. And they do these things and they orchestrate and give out the orders. And this is the thing, like I said, when I was thinking about it yesterday, I'm just like, man, this shit is pissing me off. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm mad as hell. I'm just like, man, I'm getting tired. I'm like I said, I'm getting tired of living in a world where everything is fake, man. Let everything be organic, authentic. But of course, you know, that's not Esau's way. But let's get to this. This is Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. It says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and heard, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. All right, this is speaking about Yahushai. All right, Yahushai is going to come back, and he is going to conquer. He's going to conquer the whole earth. All right. Um, and it says, verse three, and it says, we had opened the second seal. I heard the second beast say, "Come and see." Now, this is the point. Like I said, when I was like, I can't wait to see the movie of Esau, because right now, back then, you know, John the Revelator and other different prophets back then they were able to see the, the uh, prophecies they were able to see the destruction of america they were able to see a lot of the things that were going to happen the famine the, the, the sedition among men so forth and so on they were able they were actually able to see this that's why it says come and see all right john the revelator the revelator was actually able to see the missiles being shot and all of the death that was going on he was actually able to see how it shot come back and the angels and all of these things so like i said it got me to the point where i'm just like we're going to be able to see 
the things that Esau did behind the scenes, the things that have been in the past. Right now, he gave Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai gave his prophets the, the gift of being able to see the future. Now we're living in the future. So now when we get into the kingdom, we have those godlike bodies. We have a hundred percent um access to our brain. And you know, however the way the new bodies are gonna work, guess what? We're gonna be actually be able to see the past. Because like I said earlier, how we gonna have to judge Esau fully on everything that he did. All right. So we're going to actually be able to see what he did. Verse 4, it says, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat there one to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. And this is speaking about Esau. All right, and his blessing was a great sword, and he is definitely using it to kill the masses. All right? And that ultimate great sword is going to be the missile, and that's going to be his biggest curse because the missiles are going to destroy America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, all right? And he is taking peace from the earth. Every video that we damn near upload nowadays, it's about somebody complaining, man. People dying, people getting sick, everything, man. He's taking peace from the earth. Nobody is happy. Everybody got to put on, once again, the fake face. When you go to work, you got to put on this weak ass smile, talk to people because you don't want to ruin your job. You don't want to get fired. So you got to go talk to these people that you really don't want to speak to. You might have like a couple or a few that you cool with. You'd be like, okay, you know, you know, I could be real around them. But then the majority, you're just like, uh, I don't give a fuck, <laughs> you know? So it is what it is, man. He's taking peace from the earth. The animals are getting tired of being here, man. They're getting tired of being here. The animals aren't safe. A lot of the animals that used to exist, they don't because they went extinct because of Esau. That's another thing. Can't wait to see. Can't wait to see like, damn, how, how bad did you treat these animals? What did you do to them, man? Because I ain't gonna lie. When I see videos pop up every now and then when they be showing the brutality of these animals, uh, cows and horses getting beat upside the head with whatever um, instrument, man. They over here putting out videos of them saving animals from a trap when they know behind the scenes. They the ones that, like this one video I saw, they put this monkey, they put this monkey arm in, a, I think, a bamboo, and it was stuck. And you can tell they did that shit on purpose. The monkey over here suffering from the pain of his arm. And then they going to record the video and act like they're saving him from this, um, from this trap. And then they, so they could get all the millions of views and act like they're so-called good people, man. You can tell that monkey was, man, set up, man. Putting all the animals through fucking pain. Whenever I see things like that, like I said, especially when it comes to animals, I'm like, God damn, why are you messing with the animals? They don't do nothing to you. Esau go over there and look at animals in another video. All kind of videos popping up. Just like a video I saw from Elder Malcolm. He did a video a while back. He showed this one clip where Esau got these crows drunk because it was uh, peanuts that was um, soaked in whiskey, I believe. And the crows went over there and started eating them. And then they got drunk. And then after, when the crows got drunk, Esau started throwing rocks at the crows. <laughs> like, come on, man. So like I said, these are the things that I can't wait to see. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see it because I'm ready to feel that anger, man. I'm ready to feel that anger and I'm ready to actually see how bad Esau really was and is let's end it with this this is amos chapter 1 verse 11 it says thus said the lord for three transgressions of edom and for four i will not turn away the punishment thereof because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetually and he kept his wrath forever but i will send a fire upon teman which shall devour the palaces of basra this is speaking about Esau, the so-called white man, all right? It says, for three transgressions, like, all right, look, had to do the one, two, three, you're out rule. It's like, all right, one strike, all right, man, you got two more chances. Oh, three, two strikes, oh, man, here you go, about to strike out. Three strikes, oh, shit, might give you a chance. Four, nope, fucking up, man. <laughs> you fucking up. He said, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Yeah, how about Shimmy how Shai is getting ready to showcase the greatest most horrific form of slavery that this world has ever seen. Because the scriptures say you have to receive double. 
and the movies that they bring out, the history that we know of everything that they have done to us, that's already like, God damn. When you look at what we had to go through, you just like, wait, what? And this is why they are they're ashamed of their past. But like the scriptures say, the most high requires which is past. They're ashamed of it, man. This is why they're trying to get rid of the, the, the history books in school. This is why they shut down videos on YouTube, TikTok, all of these things. Because they don't want people to see how bad they actually were. But that's the spirit. Guess what we're going to be able to do, though? <laughs> Guess what we're going to be able to do, though? More women we make it. We're going to be able to see the wickedness that Esau have done from all history, man. All history. And that's one of the greatest reasons why we're going to meditate terror. Like the scriptures say, we're going to look at it and we're going to feel that emotion, man. We're going to feel that emotion because you got to remember, let's end it with this, actually. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Boy, Esau about to get his ass whooped in the kingdom, man. Oh, man. Angry with the wicked. This is Psalms chapter 7, verse 11. You got to remember, the Most High is seeing what's going on behind the scenes every day. Yahweh, all right? And what it says, it says, the Most High judges the righteous and the Most High is angry with the wicked every day. Every day. We're angry with the wicked every day, but imagine how angry the Most High is. Because he's in the spirit world and he's looking at all of these things go down clearly. Clearly. So when he's seeing all of these things, imagine the anger that he's feeling right now. All of the things that he's been seeing of all human life. And guess what? The most I said he was going to put um, his anger on us. And I love bringing out this scripture. I'll bring this scripture out all day. Ezekiel 25 and 14. And it says, And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. And they shall do an Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance. <laughs> Set the Lord power, Yahweh. Why? Because the Most High is angry with the wicked every day because he's seeing all of the things that's going on behind the scenes so guess what we're going to be able to see everything that's going on behind the scenes man when we get on the other side and that's going to amp up our spirit to 144 percent level esau you done man <laughs> it's a wrap it's a wrap like i said if we over here feeling like this in these weak ass flesh bodies huh. <laughs> wait until we get into the other side See y'all on the other side, man. <laughs> See y'all on the other side, Lord willing. Hey, so I hope this is edifying. So with that, I'm going to say, call Halayim, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aquat that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratazan, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.